Engineers describe signal propagation with mathematical models. It could be any kind of signal, including light, electromagnetic waves, electric current, or, especially for our research, a molecule concentration. We haven't seen any equations yet on this channel, but that's about to change. Get out your calculators and sharpen your pencils. Okay, I will be showing some equations, but you won't need to solve them. In this video, I'm going to present Fick's two laws of diffusion. They're actually just called Fick's first law and Fick's second law. The names aren't creative, but they are fundamental results that describe how we expect molecules to move in a fluid. The laws have been widely applied to many problems involving transport, including biophysics, and more specifically, our research field of molecular communication. Adolf Fick, born in 1829, was a German physiologist and medical doctor. In the 1850s, he worked on diffusion experiments, studying how particle concentrations would move and change within a fluid. Fick uses experiments to derive two mathematical laws for diffusion, and these laws are what he's most known for today. Fick's first law of diffusion relates the flux of a molecule to its concentration. The flux is how much of the molecule is passing through an area over some time. Imagine drawing a square inside a fluid container. The flux corresponds to the net number of molecules that pass through the square per time interval. So the units for flux are molecule quantity per area, so distance squared, per time. Consider observing the square for one second. If there is one molecule passing through the square from left to right, but three molecules passing through it from right to left, then the net flux is two molecules per second per area of the square. In order for a flux to exist, there needs to be an uneven placement of molecules. That is, there needs to be more molecules in some areas than others. Then there will be an overall flux towards the areas with fewer molecules, those with lower concentrations. Fick's first law states that the strength of the flux scales with how steeply the concentration changes over space. The scaling factor depends on the type of molecule we're measuring and the conditions of the fluid that surrounds it. This scaling factor is the diffusion coefficient d, which we introduced in our previous video. Mathematically, we usually write the flux as variable j, the diffusion coefficient as parameter d, and the concentration as parameter c. Over one dimension, say the x direction, we get j equals negative d times the derivative of c with respect to x. And we can extend this to two or three dimensions by including y and z and switching to partial derivatives. Fick's second law of diffusion replaces the flux. It relates how a molecule concentration changes over space with how fast it changes over time. The second law can be derived from the first law, but we'll jump to the final result. It turns out that a molecule concentration's rate of change over time scales with its second derivative over space. But what's the second derivative over space? The first derivative was the steepness of the concentration over space. The second derivative measures how sharply that steepness changes. Now, what's the scaling factor here? It's actually the same diffusion coefficient d. Mathematically, we write that the concentration time derivative is equal to d times the concentration's second order spatial derivative. This relation is also simply known as the diffusion equation. Fick's laws are the fundamental building blocks for deriving most existing equations for diffusion-based propagation. In fact, you can find many resources, including surveys and textbooks, that cover solutions to these equations for environments with different geometries and different combinations of molecule sources and observers. There are links to a few of these resources below. In future videos, we'll see example solutions that we've applied to molecular communication problems. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. You can like the video and leave feedback in the comments. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more research highlights and tutorials on biophysical communication engineering. See you next time.